Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 9th of December. Citizenship Amendment Bill tabled in Indian Parliament. Protest held in US against Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. And Sri Lanka opens sports city for investors. And now for all the details. The Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 aimed at giving citizenship to religious minorities persecuted in neighboring Muslim countries was introduced in lower house of the Indian Parliament by Interior Minister Amit Shah on Monday. Shah said the bill is not against minorities but against infiltrators. The Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 was introduced in Lok Sabha, the lower house of the Indian Parliament, by Interior Minister Amit Shah on Monday. The bill seeks to give Indian nationality to non-Muslim refugees from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan who are facing religious persecution there. Introducing the bill, Shah said in Lok Sabha that the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 is not against minorities but against infiltrators. The Interior Minister said that proposed legislation is being brought on the basis of reasonable classifications provided under the Constitution and it does not violate any of its provisions. Sabhapati Mahoday, I will say one more time, I want to say all of you to your mind, that I want to say that I have come to the bill that I have come to the bill, वो बिल किसी भी तरह से किसी भी दृष्टिकोण से संविधान के किसी भी आर्टिकल को आहत नहीं करता है मीन वाइल सेवरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इंक्लूडिंग स्टूडेंट बॉडीज है ट्वेल्व आवर शट डाउन इन इंडिया नॉर्थ ईस्ट एंड असैम प्रोविंस टू प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द सिटीजनशिप अमेंडमेंट बिल प्रोटेस्टर्स डिमांडेड दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्क्रैप द बिल According to the proposed legislation, members of Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi and Christian communities who have come from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan till December 31, 2014 and facing religious persecution there will not be treated as illegal immigrants but given Indian citizenship. Protesters fear that entry of these people will endanger their identity and livelihood. A minor fire was again reported on Monday from the same factory building in New Delhi, where 43 people were killed by a massive fire on Sunday. The small fire was controlled quickly after four fire engines were rushed to the spot immediately. A fresh fire broke out in a building in Indian capital New Delhi on Monday morning, where 43 people lost their lives a day before in a fire due to asphyxiation. Four fire engines were rushed to the spot and the small fire caused by burning waste was controlled quickly. On Sunday, at least 43 people were killed as a fire swept through the six-story building as laborers were sleeping. The factory, which made school bags and toys, was packed with combustible materials like paper, plastic and cardboard, causing it to burn for hours before being brought under control. लोग बेचारे गरीब पता नहीं किस तरीके से कैसे रह रहे हैं वहाँ फैक्ट्री चल रही है फैक्ट्री जबकि अलाउड नहीं है तो वो चीज़ तो गवर्नमेंट को प्रशासन को देखना चाहिए ना इसके बारे में जब वो सर पे आ बैठती है तब वो प्रशासन की आँख खुलती है The Sunday's incident is being perceived as one of the biggest fire tragedies of New Delhi in terms of casualties. Most people died due to suffocation as narrow streets and congested locality presented problems with smoke escaping. Police have arrested the owner and manager of the factory. The Delhi government has ordered a probe into the incident and has assured action against those responsible for the fire. 
launching a scathing attack on Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan, firebrand politician Maulana Fazul Rahman on Sunday said, he will not tolerate the unjust government and will not let it keep ruling. He claimed that in Pakistan, the Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government's ship is about to sink. Firebrand Pakistani politician and chief of conservative Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl or JUIF party, Maulana Fazl ur Rahman on Sunday said that he will not tolerate Prime Minister Imran Khan's unjust government and will not let it keep ruling. Speaking at a rally, he said that the government's ship was about to sink while making a reference to the rising inflation and unemployment in Pakistan. Fazl said that the movement that he had started against the government will achieve its objective. लेकिन आपकी हिम्मत को मुबारक हो कि आज हुक्मरानों की किश्ती डावाडोल है और वो अब डूबने के करीब पहुंच गई है। Fazl began the Azadi or Freedom March on October 27 from the southern city of Karachi to capital Islamabad against Khan-led Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf government. On November 13, after holding numerous talks with government representatives. Fazl and his supporters vacated the protest venue in Islamabad. He announced that his party would continue its anti-government protest in other regions of the country as part of its so-called Plan B. Moving on, a protest was held outside the Pakistani embassy in Washington on Sunday against Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. U.S. veterans also joined the demonstration organized by Indian Americans to express strong condemnation of Pakistan's policies. A group of U.S. veterans on Sunday joined a demonstration by Indian Americans outside the Pakistani embassy in Washington to protest against Pakistan's support to terrorist groups. The protesters gathered to voice their anguish and strong condemnation of Pakistan's policy and practices of state-sponsored terrorism against neighboring India and Afghanistan as well as some Western countries. Raising slogans like Pakistan is Taliban, Pakistan a terror state, and where was Osama bin Laden? The protesters demanded Pakistan be declared a state sponsor of terrorism. Far too long we've seen state sponsored terrorism, and the time is now to stop. The actions of different countries like Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, no more. The time is now, the time is to stop, and to point attention where it deserves. The demonstrators also demanded culprits behind the 2611 Mumbai attacks which killed at least 166 persons, including six Americans, to be brought to justice. India and the U.S. accused that perpetrators of the attacks in 2008 were linked to Pakistan-based lashkar e toiba terror group. Pakistan, however, continues to shelter Hafiz Saeed, who is blamed to be the mastermind behind the attacks. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan airline Cam Air has paid tribute to renowned Japanese doctor Tetsu Nakamura by painting portraits of him on their planes. Nakamura was killed last week by unknown gunmen when a car he and five others were driving was riddled with bullets, leaving both Afghanistan and Japan in mourning. Afghan airline Cam Air paid tribute to Japanese doctor and aid worker Tetsu Nakamura by painting portraits of him on their planes after he was killed in an attack last week. Nakamura and five members of his aid organization, Peace Japan Medical Services, were killed by unidentified gunmen in eastern Nangarhar province, leaving both Afghanistan and Japan in mourning. Nakamura's body was flown to his birthplace on Saturday. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, Nakamura's family, as well as other Afghan and Japanese officials attended the ceremony at Kabul International Airport. Afghanistan, <laughs> 
او د قانون منګوله ته ورکوي بون ان ویسٹ ان جاپان 73 ایئر اولڈ ناکامورا ٹرین ایز ا ڈاکٹر بیگان ٹریٹنگ افغان ریفیوجیز ہو ور پورنگ اوور دا بارڈر ان پاکستان ان دی ویک اف دی 1979 سوویت انویژن اف افغانستان This led to him opening a clinic in Afghanistan in 1991. Following a devastating drought in the year 2000, he first helped bore wells and then came up with the idea of an irrigation canal, which was finally completed after six grueling years of labor. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has opened the China-funded Colombo port city to investors to ensure that it will emerge as a new business hub in the island country. The port city is Lanka's largest foreign direct investment project which is designed to be a financial center with hotels and marinas. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has officially opened the China-backed port city near Colombo to investors with the hope that it will emerge into a new business hub in the country. The port city spanning through 269 hectares of reclaimed land from the sea was officially declared part of Sri Lanka's map at the ceremony held under the patronage of Rajapaksa on Saturday. China Harbour Engineering Company is building the 1.4 billion dollar port city that is designed to be a financial center with hotels, marinas and even a motor racing track. The port city is Sri Lanka's largest foreign direct investment project and is expected to attract billions of US dollars of investments in the coming years. It is also expected to create over 80,000 jobs and transform the island nation into a regional business and financial hub. Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh have demanded Myanmar to be held to account at the International Court of Justice. Myanmar's leader and Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi is set to defend the country at the UN court on Tuesday against charges of genocide of the minority community. Rohingya refugees living in Cox's Bazar district in Bangladesh hope for justice from the upcoming genocide trial against Myanmar at the UN's top court that Myanmar's leader Aung San Suu Kyi will be attending. Suu Kyi will be defending her countries against the charges of genocide of its Rohingya Muslim minority at the International Court of Justice in The Hague. The first hearings will start from Tuesday. Azizis maze ziyan ara Rohingya Muslim ana kholo bichar utte nyan maze ara hi tar ara khodomboti gori betha bichi shukriya gori. More than 730,000 Rohingya fled Myanmar since 2017. After a military led crackdown which the UN has said was executed with genocidal intent and included mass killings and rape Gambia a tiny mainly muslim west african country filed a lawsuit in november accusing Myanmar of genocide the most serious international crime against its rohingya muslim minority Over 350 participants from across India gathered at a beach in Mumbai city to take part in a sailing competition during the weekend. The event aimed to promote adventure sports among the youth. Over 350 participants from across India gathered at the Girgaum Chopatli beach in western Mumbai city to take part in a sailing competition on Saturday. Organized by Army Yachting North, a part of the Indian Army Missions Olympic program, the Sail India 2019 competition is set to be the largest in the country. Onlookers were glued to the fetching side of the sailors in both junior and senior categories who took part on the last day of the week-long event on Saturday. Basically, this is being held in Mumbai to highlight Mumbai as an ideal sailing destination and possibly in the future upgraded to an international standard despite being considered as a sport at the international level yacht sailing in india is still at its nascent stage thus to promote such adventure sports among the youth army yachting node offer the top performers a chance to be in the national squad and get an opportunity to present the country at international level and in olympics Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.